This is video material for the course Introduction to Mathematical Logic at TU Dresden. The target audience are mathematics bachelor students in their third year and uh, diploma computer science students with a minor in mathematics. The prerequisites are some familiarity with basic set theory. As opposed to axiomatic set theory, this is also sometimes called naive set theory. So I assume that you know what a uh, uh, function is and what a relation is. Ideally, you also know some fundamental algebraic structures, such as groups, uh, rings, fields, or relational structures such as graphs and partial orders. We will need them as motivating examples for the more general concepts that we learn in this course. These videos are just supplementary material for the course. The most important document of the course is the script, which will be made available chapter by chapter on the webpage of the course. The script also contains uh, exercises. This is important. Doing the exercises is essential for succeeding in this course. There is also a new beautiful textbook on the topic. It is called A First Journey Through Mathematical Logic and it's written by Martin Hiltz and François Lezère, published by the AMS. It costs uh, $33, and I can really recommend uh, this book. It provides a neat and optimized access to the subject. My name is Manuel Bodierski. I'm professor for algebra and discrete structures at TU Dresden. Mathematical logic is a fantastic tool for me, and in this course I hope to share some of my passion about the topic with you. Today's video is about a motivation for the subject and also an outline of the content of this course. What is a proof? Proofs are very much at the center of the mathematics cur curriculum at university, not so much at school. So what is a proof? Uh, one could say uh, it's a rigorous argument that convinces the uh, audience or the readers, that uh, some statement is true. But what does it mean convince? Uh, convince who? And uh, it's clear that this is not a formal definition of the concept of proof. And we usually don't teach this uh, in the beginning of the university program because it's actually technically demanding. And it's not the most uh, intuitive topic. We start, we prefer to start with concrete topics because this is what students find easier. So what precisely is what constitutes a proof? What uh, axioms are we allowed to use precisely? What, what is a, a valid proof step? This will be an important topic in this course. To formalize the notion of a proof, we need to introduce logic. More specifically, we'll introduce, we'll work with first-order logic. First-order logic is in many respects the most important logic, both in mathematics and in computer science. It strikes a very good balance between expressiveness on the one hand side and very good model theoretic properties on the other hand. So, by what, what do I mean by uh, expressiveness? We can use first-order logic to formulate the axioms of axiomatic set theory. And in this way, we can basically perform all mathematics, we can formalize all mathematics within first-order logic. We'll learn this, we'll see this in detail in the course uh, by introducing uh, zermelo frenkel set theory with the axiom of choice. This is sometimes abbreviated ZFC. You, you might have heard this already. And uh, in ZFC, we'll illustrate that you can code mathematics and we'll illustrate this with uh, the ordinals and cardinals. In what concerns the good model theoretic properties, I 
will have to refer to model theory courses. Uh, this is uh, maybe uh, outside the scope of this course. In computer science, in many applications you study either extensions of first order logics or restrictions of first order logic. First order logic itself is already important. It basically corresponds to the most common database query language. And many restrictions and extensions are important, but this basic starting point is always first order logic. So it's really central in computer science. The first bigger goal of this course is uh, the so-called completeness theorem. We will introduce a notion of formal proof, which has three very good, very important properties. The first one is that everything which has a formal proof, every statement, every sentence which has a formal proof is valid, it's, it's true. Uh, that's of course what, what we want. This is called soundness. The second important property of our notion of formal proof is that all valid statements have a formal proof. And the third important property is that this uh, proof system is so simple that we can program a computer so that it recognizes all axioms that we are allowed to use in these proofs and the computer can also check valid proof steps. Valid proof steps are very simple and by combining the axioms with these very simple proof steps we can prove all sentences in mathematics that are true. And this is uh, Gödel's completeness theorem. And it has many remarkable mathematical consequences. The first one is that we can use it to prove the compactness theorem. The compactness theorem has many applications in mathematics, in many different areas. Ele very elegant, it's a must-know in mathematics. And the name is borrowed from topology, compactness. So there is indeed a topology, a certain topology, so that the compactness theorem is equivalent to the statement that uh, this topology is compact. I already said that we can program a computer to check proofs. But in fact, this also means that we can program a computer to find proofs. Because we can simply list exhaustively all strings, all candidates for correct proofs, and then check whether they are correct. This is of course not a very efficient procedure. But it also appears to be a computer science issue, but in fact it has a very remarkable mathematical consequence. One can use this to show that there are statements which don't have a proof and also their negation does not have a proof in ZFC. So these uh, statements are independent from ZFC. And this is nothing special about ZFC. In fact, one can show this for all theories, for all axiom systems that are expressive enough to formalize a sufficiently strong part of arithmetic. This is called Gödel's first incompleteness theorem. And in fact, something uh, uh, more is true, something stronger is true. One can even show in ZFC that there is no proof in ZFC that ZFC is consistent. Being consistent means you, you, you can't derive a contradiction from it. We would like to be consistent. Uh, if we would be inconsistent, everything would follow from our uh, our, the, the axiom system would, would be worthless. So of course we want that ZFC is consistent, but we can't prove it in ZFC. And this can be shown. We, we can show that we can't show. But we'll start very slowly. Before even introducing first order logic, I will introduce propositional logic. This is uh, some sort of warm-up. Uh, propositional logic is a microcosm of logic 
and it contains already many aspects and concepts and ideas of logic that we'll need later anyway. So let's first practice a little bit with propositional logic.